Welcome to the Spiritual Transformation Podcast. I am your host, Mary Beth, and I am thrilled to introduce this fun guest to you today, my special guest, Travis Hope. He is a psychic medium. He's a spiritual guide. He's also the host of the Psychic Happy Hour Podcast. In addition, he's a manifestation and abundance expert. He's going to give us tips today. You do not want to miss this episode. Go ahead and hit like. If you're not subscribed to my community, Spiritual Transformation with Mary Beth, go ahead and hit subscribe now. And Travis, welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much for having me, Mary Beth. And that was such a beautiful introduction. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. I am just so excited to talk to you because you're just so fun. And I only heard about you last week from a previous guest. Oh, here's my co-host. Um, he oh, loves hi. to join. This is my co-host, TJ. And um, as, as long as you don't mess with the microphone, we're good. He's done that before to me. But yeah, my guest last week, uh, Tamika Murray, she's actually an Ascension coach. She was like, oh, you've got to follow this guy. He is so fun. And and immediately I, I, I looked and I'm like, I need to have him as a guest. So here we are. That's how yeah. that unfolded. And then we had a mutual love, friend. I love how the universe works. Yeah, we have a mutual friend, Taylor. So Taylor! Fun small universe. Shout out to Taylor. Thank you so much for connecting us because I netting us because I netting us for endless DMs. You're a popular yes. guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want to know a little bit. I don't I love this because I really don't know that much about you or your journey at all. So we'll all be learning together. So were you born psychic or tell me a little bit about your background and how you became a psychic medium? Yeah, so I make this like joke that my grandmother let me play with a Ouija board when I was a kid, and that's how it all started. But it's like, but it's true. I mean, she did let me play with a Ouija board. I don't believe that's where it started, but she did. Uh, no, you know, you know, I've always been, um, I've always been sensitive. I've always had this like you know, just intuitive sense of energy that's around me. And for the longest time, I actually thought it was anxiety. Yes. And so as I, you know, kind of went along my journey and I, you know, I started tapping in more, I realized that I have this connection to other people's energy into, you know, into the spirit world. And so, you know, I tuned it out for a long time. Like a lot of people that are um, intuitive, uh, you know, all of that was really hard to handle and I didn't really know how to process it. And I grew up in a place where, you know, we didn't really talk too much about emotions or feelings, especially for men. And and then, and I was also coming out. So it was like all of these things, right? Yeah. And so, um, you know, I kind of equate it to, uh, it's, sometimes I equate it to being gay, where it was like, I just kind of grew up thinking that, everyone was this way. <laughs> <laughs> That's I just kind of thought everybody was like, everyone's gay or everyone, you know, everyone's this, this, spirit. <laughs> yeah, everyone can do that. What do you mean you can't do that? So, um, you know, so I suppressed it for a long time. And then, you know, I found my way to uh, using alcohol and drugs as a mean to, means to kind of soothe some of those deeper emotions and those big feelings and those all of that energy that I was feeling in my body. And so uh, it wasn't until I really started committing to my sobriety that a lot of this started to really make sense. And, um, you know, it's been an incredible journey. I didn't start out with the intention to be a professional medium. That was never, you know, my intention. I had, uh, it was in September of 2020, I had ended a 17 year career in the beauty industry mm. and um, my final role, I was a regional sales manager managing the West coast uh, for a cosmetic brand. And uh, I've always loved helping people. I've always loved helping people find kind of their magic inside of them. And uh, so when I left cosmetics, it was kind of like, Oh my gosh, I've just like identified the last 17 years of my personality and who I am with my career. Now what? Right. And so then I, um, I get on TikTok and, uh, it's about October at this point and I get on TikTok and I start just reading tarot and, you know, I've always read tarot. I've always given re tarot readings to friends and, and, um, and then my TikTok account just really started to grow really, really fast. And I had a few videos go viral and, um, 
then I started getting messages from people like, oh, do you give readings? And I'm like, sure. You know, I've given readings to now friends. I do. I'm like, <laughs> can't be that different than strangers, surely. Uh, it's very different. Um, and then, you know, as, as I just progressed and I kept opening up and kept opening up, I stopped using cards. I love tarot for myself as a personal tool. I don't use them with clients anymore. Um, and now my primary focus is um, mediumship and some and psychic work. And psychic work to me is is not so much the fortune telling piece. It's the helping people check in with their energy. Where are things kind of moving for them? How can they align their energy to what it is that they're they're wanting? And so um, that's kind of like you know my my story in a nutshell. It's just been such an amazing couple of years. I mean, I've had so many great opportunities come up and, um, and I'm just, I'm really grateful. So, um, that's kind of like the very condensed version of that story, but you know, it's, it's been fun. I love that. And, and I, and there's a couple things you said that really, that I have in common with you actually with the, and I'm so glad you brought it up. Cause I bet so many of the viewers, like that anxiety that you have when you feel yeah. other people's energy. And when, before I knew I was an empath, I same thing. Like I didn't understand how to block energy. I couldn't be in a crowded room. Um, and then at night too, like, you know, you can feel presence in your room and you don't know that you don't know why like why am I so anxious like you 3 a.m you're up like and um I think that I also well I don't think I I know that I also started to self-medicate with like alcohol yeah. <laughs> and and when as a te young teenager and um actually I tried alcohol for the first time when I was only 11 so you know that's been you know I didn't like I wasn't like a regular, but you know, I, the, I, you know, you start the younger you start, the more of a like, and it just felt oh, such a relief. And that's a red flag. Like, oh my gosh, what a relief, you know, <laughs> like immediate. And I was like, this is the answer that I've been searching for because then I didn't have to feel everybody else's feelings or I still did, but it was okay. It, it wasn't any longer like anxiety. So a lot of people, if you have anxiety when you're around a bunch of people, that could be why right like it could be that you're tuning into their energies and, and there's ways to block that out and i'm so glad that i learned how to how to do that because i couldn't be a coach you know i couldn't be a, if i'm taking in taking on my clients energies all the time but I, sometimes i do you know but we know how to cleanse the energy now so yeah but, so how do you how do you like tune in and prepare like you 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 actually talk to loved ones who've crossed over the veil and how do you is there is it like all the time are they like coming to you like hey Travis <laughs> what's up you got to talk to this woman in the grocery store or is it something yeah. that you prepare for or do you block it out certain times a day yeah at first it was I mean you know I I, I by no means uh ever have I only one time that I give some random person a message from a loved one. Um, I don't, I'm not a big believer in ambush readings. I, you know, it's not my style. I like that um, term. That makes sense. That's yeah, it does literally what it's like ambush readings. Like that's the best term that I think I can, yes. you know, find for it. Um, but no, at first, cause I think, you know, when you decide to like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to work with spirit. Here's what I'm going to do. And I didn't like, I didn't set out to be a medium. It just started happening during, uh, during tarot readings, mm. people's loved ones would just kind of slip through. And, and so you know, and it, the clients weren't asking, it would just, the loved one would just come through. And so I, uh, and that was something that would happen when I was drinking as well. My, I grew up in Dayton, Ohio, and there's a lot of beautiful historical homes there. And I would, you know, after the bars, my, I would go to my friend's houses and I'd be like, you know, super drunk. And I'd be yeah. like, there two women that used to live here, live here and here are their names. And my friends would have the house ledgers because in those historical homes, you'd have the ledgers and they'd be like, how oh, yeah. did you know that? And I'm like, you know, and you know, so I just, I don't recommend connecting to spirit while you are drinking. That is not safe practice as kids. So don't, don't drink in spirit. Um, but when but I, I, yeah, solid. So I, um, you know, so when I, but when you start intentionally working with spirit, that open sign just turns on, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, with spirit, you do have to kind of set some boundaries. And I was very thankful to 
find really great mentors and I'm, I'm a Virgo. I will take any, Me too. any class. Oh, I love that. When's your birthday? Uh, the 20th of September. I'm a September Virgo. I'm a September so, 5th. I love it. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> um, Thank you. So yeah, I, any books I can get my hands on. So, you know, any classes I can take, uh, I will. And so I, I just, I feel very lucky because in my, the beginning of my journey, I was able to really find some great mentors and people to help me protect my energy, mm. uh, work with spirit in a way that, you know, that, that feels really good for me. Um, and so, you know, the bombarding doesn't happen. It will still sometimes happen, but I've developed really good practices to just let them know, you know, Hey, wait your turn. Uh, <laughs> we'll, get in line. We'll get to you. <laughs> yeah. We'll get to you when the appointment starts. And so, uh, so yeah, so, but it's, it's all learning. I love that. And I'm glad you brought up too, not to try to tune into spirit when you're drinking because like, so I quit drinking. I've been sober for a little over four and a half years and my oh, clarity, great. isn't it wonderful? Like how much more you can tune in and all your gifts come out. You guys, if you think you have some, some of these gifts, try, I mean, try it. Even if it's just 30 days, try, you will get so much clarity. And I think the clarity is my favorite part of sobriety, you know, yeah. being able to tune in, you know, without yeah, I, the blurry. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I've been so, June will be four years for me. Nice. And, um, and you had asked me how I prepared and I totally just forgot to answer the question. <laughs> so, so I, you know, I prepare with, uh, I, I, I meditate 15 to 20 minutes before every single client I do is sitting in the power exercise, um, mm -hmm. which if anyone listening is not familiar, it's, uh, it, uh, it's taught mostly through like old school spiritualism, but it's a, it's an exercise. that's like kind of coming back and making a resurgence, which is really cool to see. Um, but, and then, you know, the morning of clients, like I'll go to the gym. I have like my normal routine. I'll go to target. I just try to not do anything that's like super stressful or, you know, I just try to keep as my mornings as peaceful as I can before clients. And then, you know, I work with my guides. I work with Archangel Michael just to clear and protect my space. But that's pretty much it. Then we, we tune into clients and we get rolling for the day. So that's, that's how I prepare. I love it. I love it. So, um, tell me a little bit about, so I noticed on your Instagram that you have, well, I think you have a free manifestation, uh, or, or, or is it abundance? Something, I, something you're offering for free. Yeah. I have like a little, I have a group on, or it's like a, it's called a channel, I think on Instagram. So it's, um, it's, it's free. You can join. And it just, it's like little, I just send little messages on abundance tips, like new moon reminders, full moon reminders, all those, you know, all those fun things. Um, any oh, manifestation cool. tips I hear that I really like, I pop them in there. Um, but yes, yeah, so I offer that. And then, uh, I do have an abundance meditation. Yeah. Uh, that for purchase on my, on my profile as well. Nice. And yeah, you've got to charge for an abundance meditation. <laughs> You know, it wouldn't even make sense not to. So um, tell me, do you, you talked about manifestation tips. Mm -hmm. Are there any like practical tips that you could like let the viewers know about that you think that maybe they could start applying today? Yeah, I, you know, I'm a big, big believer in getting really clear on what it is that you want and writing it down. Yeah. I think a lot of, a lot of times we have these ideas of what we want. They kind of swirl around, but when we write out an intention statement, so an intention statement is something that has, that's clear. It has a lot of emotion behind it. It's written from the positive present tense. So writing it like it's already happened. That way we can work in the quantum and bring that future into our present moment. Um, you know, and I would focus on, a specific area of life. So if somebody wants to bring in more personal prosperity, an abundant statement for personal prosperity could be something like, I am abundant beyond measure. I am so grateful for multiple streams of income, uh, you know, and you can just keep going. And if you have specific details of how that happens, great. Um, and if you don't really know how you want that to happen yet, that's okay. Keep it general. But writing down those statements is huge. And what I would also say is, is separate your personal abundance from your work and career. A lot oh. of times we attach our financial abundance to our job. Interesting. What happens if you start stop working? 
Yeah, because abundance. abundance can come in so many forms and in so many forms. magical ways too. And I feel like the more we try to make it, it has to come in this way on my paycheck, like you're saying, yeah. then it's so limiting. Because that's the way it has to come. And that's and it. A lot of a lot of folks who are working, you know, like your your nine to five jobs or you know, whatever, that paycheck is your cap. I believe that there is infinite amounts of of money in this universe and if we learn how to date money and respect money for the energy mm. that it is we can separate it from our jobs and then our job just becomes one flow of income oh i just got full body goosebumps that's always like woo. yeah because it's so, so yeah. true it's so true and we and like you said we limit ourselves we're the only ones limiting ourselves and and the i am statements gosh you guys I hear people doing it all the time. It's and that's one benefit of one on one coaching like th yeah. th that we do is because the hardest thing for people to see is themselves and including myself, you know, sometimes people catch me saying something, but I didn't even hear myself say that. But I am it is a powerful statement. So like you were talking about intention statements, anytime we say I am and that whatever you say after that, you're in creation mode, you guys. So make it really, really good. I am so appreciative that I have, you know, several sources of income or whatever it might be. I'm so that or, or or that I now have this, you know, so like you said, and that feeling along with it, when we say it's got to be the feeling too. like a lot of people don't realize we could say one thing and feel another. And that's a wobble. That's a wobble in our vibration. Right. You know, we want that to match. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that emotion piece is so powerful. It's yeah. so powerful. So like Joe Dispenza would call it the heart and mind coherence, right? You know, they got to uh, match or Greg Braden. He does a lot of like expansion on, on this stuff that and I've said this so many times, but I feel it's always I, worth repeating that anything people think manifestations only like to, you know, either like gain prosperity or things like that. And we're always manifesting. You don't get to turn off the switch. So you're always manifesting in some, and that only doesn't mean good stuff. You're some manifesting stuff you don't want. It's what are you focusing on? So it's a lot about monitoring our thoughts, monitoring our emotions and catching ourselves and just practicing because I think we've got these programs, these old programs. I mean, I know we do that. The, it's not harder to, to manifest the positive things, we just have more practice with the negative, you know? And so that's all it is, is just making that switch, catching yourself and brainwashing yourself the other direction because we were definitely brainwashing ourselves. I think all of us like have those negative thought loops, you know, <laughs> criticizing totally. ourselves. Totally. I sit in on these, like, um, there's a spiritual community that I um, sometimes sit in on. The, they do these like uh, weekly meetings or four times a week. And, uh, and, uh, I, we were, the conversation last night was about negative thought patterns and how those develop. And, and someone goes, yeah, you just have to trick yourself into believing that whatever you want is real. And then this other, gen then this gentleman chimes in and he's one of those guys, he just has this like sage way. It's not like you wait for him to speak. You know what I mean? And he goes, he was like, well, don't tell yourself that you're tricking yourself. Yeah. Because tricking yourself implies that you're lying to yourself. The lie is that things are bad or the lie is that you yes. can't have what you want. Like you've already tricked yourself. Now you're telling yourself the, the truth. And I was like, oh. You, yeah, oh. you just gave me the chill hills again. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That is like so true. Yeah. yeah, like we're already living in the trick. Now it's the finding the truth breaking so. out of the illusion that we are limited and yeah that's yeah. that's like the the limiting beliefs are the lie you know yeah. and the abundance is the truth yeah. so i i love that god i'm gonna i'm gonna write that down so yeah. uh, do you think anybody um can learn to be psychic like i know you had it naturally you kind of just thought everybody mm -hmm. everybody yeah. was like this but do you think that people can develop those skills or you mm -hmm. were kind of born with the gift and or you're not. <laughs> I, you know what? I equate it to like any other ability. Uh, like everyone can sing. Yeah. And to a degree, you is can. Is it good or bad? <laughs> can, right. Should you do it professionally is a whole other question. Um, it, you know, so I think, you know, and I think it, 
like we'll use singing as an example because I think that's something easy for people to wrap their brains around. You know, you can go to a vocal coach, you can finesse things, you can maybe improve. But I think there are some people who are just, just naturally inclined one way, like any other gift, ability, skill. Um, and so why that is, I have no idea. Do you think um, we choose that like before we incarnate, like our blueprint is like a template, like, okay, I want to have these skills and these gifts because this in this lifetime, like I was told that I w um, was like, I'm going to be a counselor in this life. Like that was like what I wanted to do. So in a, in a way, I'm, I'm right on purpose, a coach, a counselor, a, a counsel, you know, but, um, but for a long time, I wasn't, I wasn't on my path at all. And I think a lot of not being on the path that we kind of created for ourselves prior to incarnation leads to addiction, depression, all these mm. things, because we're not on the path that we kind of signed ourselves up for. And I think our soul giving us these, you know, these emotions, these, you know, mm. frequencies that are like, you know, unwanted. It's also, it's just an indicator, you know, like, Hey, Hey, get back on track. You're not on the path. You're not doing what you signed up for. And that's depressing because our soul remembers, we just disconnected ourselves from our higher, from the higher self, right? Yeah, I yeah, I mean, in, we're not really taught to tune into that, right? Like we're right. we're at least me, you know, growing up in Ohio, my <laughs> that's where I am. <laughs> yeah, my programming as a male was, you know, don't don't feel your emotions, suppress them, right? And so it took a took some years to deprogram that and get back to the truth of my emotions are what make me so powerful. And those emotions are, you know, one of my favorite spiritual teachers, Abraham Hicks, talks about your emotions being your GPS. Oh my God, I love Abraham. And so, so your emotions being your GPS of kind of how things are going or where you are, right? And so, um, you know, feeling those emotions is what helped me to... Uh, aligned to the path that had already found me. I think the path already finds us. I don't think we mm -hmm. have to find it. I think we just have to clear out the stuff that keeps us from seeing it or aligning yes. to it. Like addictions would, would and, you know, yeah. it's a huge distraction, you know, like, cause you, you're never quite, or just any, just, I mean, even Netflix can be an addiction to some people because you're just distracting yourself. You're not tuned in. You know, it's, it, everything's fine in, in moderation, I think. But like, I personally learned that I'm not a moderator. <laughs> yeah. Something's I good. I want a lot of it, you know? So yeah. I just have to abstain from certain things, you know? Yeah. I think, you know what? I used to say, like, for me, it was, I used to say, like, everything in moderation. Now I don't know if I like that for me. <laughs> I think more so it's just, does how does this feel? Like, is it does it feel like, peace or does it feel like pleasure and mm. pleasure is very short it's very fleeting yes um peace though like feels unlimiting it's it's it feels like freedom to me yes so oh, that's so true inner peace is something that i never had when i was drinking you know like i just always was looking not. for the <laughs> no I, like and and then I, I i think that and probably same with you you get to a point you just know too much about vibration and you know frequencies and you know like you know it it, it is a lower vibrational frequency substance so we're lowering it and then we for me i felt like i was and by the way, I was completely functional. I was running two businesses. Yeah. You know, it, it, I was already a life coach, you know, <laughs> before yeah. I, but I didn't see it as a problem because everybody freaking drinks. How can you even tell it's a problem? It's just normal. Now I'm a weirdo. Now I'm, cause I'm sober. <laughs> now I'm the yeah. oddball. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I totally get that. I think, you know, there's certain things, I don't know about you, but you know, in my journey, it, it's, there's been things that have just come into my awareness gradually that weren't even as big as my drinking, like little things, like eat certain foods I was eating or certain folks mm -hmm. I was spending my time with that one day it's like, you just wake up and it's like, okay, actually I, I can't keep doing this. And it's almost like a light switches. And it's like, but I, I don't, I think that sometimes it's designed for those things to be gradual and, 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 and yeah. more of a process versus like a, you know, a I'm journey. Go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I just think as we grow and evolve, certain things just no longer fit. I think where we get into trouble is where, you know, we try to still make those things fit. 
Absolutely. And I'm glad you brought up people too, because mm. um, toxic relationships, like w in my coaching practice, yeah. I get more people, suff I want to say suffering, that's probably the wrong word to use, but just stuck, stuck yeah. is a good word, in these toxic relationship cycles, even more than, you know, drugs and alcohol, like, yeah. and, and it's just the codependency aspect of it is so tough to break out of. And like you said, I, I'm so thankful and appreciative that I had the journey of toxic relationships, mm -hmm. toxic substances food mm -hmm. i was a huge food addict and sugar addict and Man. like i needed that struggle in order to help other people because how would i just reading a book book learning about it you know i needed to feel like this has nothing to do with intelligence by the way you guys nothing it's like literally there's there's a small percentage and i don't i don't know how much i believe it's stats you know because like they're all over the place but i heard i read 25 percent of people only have the ability to really moderate just have a reasonable amount and then you know that it, it's it, it's pretty tough like there's but but there's about 25 percent who literally like have one cookie and they're like i'm good th th it's unusual not it's not, not no no i would eat the i am not that piece. person i, I eat the whole thing yeah i mean yeah <laughs> so that's why i just gotta abstain and i heard it on a podcast the other day i was listening to one of my friends sent me about they called it you either have a dial like if you're a moderator, you can dial it. So, you know, okay, I can moderate this and I don't need to have, you know, if I have one drink, I can just stop at one or two. That wasn't me, you know, but I have the switch. So it's either a dial or a switch. I'm either all in or all out. And I'm an extremist in so many areas of my life. And they literally say our brains are different. That's just, mm -hmm. our brains are not the same. So that is, it's not like you're not intelligent. It's, it's not like you're weak. It's literally just, not how our brains work. Yeah. And I, I don't know about you. I love it though, because when I have something that's joyful, oh my gosh, I am feeling the joy and we the get extra joy. Of whatever it is to the max. Like I am in it. And it like I love that. I wouldn't give that up for anything. Okay. Now you made me want to tell the story. Because yeah. you're one hundred percent correct. Um when we do have the addictive type brains, we do I I I have read this, I'm not making it up, that we do have the ability to feel more pleasure, feel more joy, get yeah. more ecstatic over things than yeah. the, the normal brains. Or I mean normal, I, I hate that word, but I just, for lack of a better yeah. word, I don't want to be normal anyway, by the way. So um, I, when I was trying to quit at first, I really wanted to keep alcohol in my life. So I was trying everything. I was trying organic wine. My thing was red wine. Like I, that was, I could really turn down pretty much everything else, um, but I loved red wine and that was, it's also like affected me the worst. And <laughs> so um, the strongest stuff. So I was tried this stuff my friend found called naltrexone and it's um, the Sinclair method where you, it literally blocks the pleasure centers of your brain. And then you, you drink, you still get the buzz, but without the joy, <laughs> like it doesn't have, you don't feel like, so it makes your brain more like a normal drinker okay so i you take it before you drink and then you drink you literally are like okay no wonder they're able to just leave half a glass on the fucking table yeah sorry yeah. no wonder because they don't feel what we feel not even close because it blocks so it's a um opiate blocker and or some people call opioid blocker so it blocks the pleasure centers and people are also using naltrexone for well, I guess now everyone's using that other pill now, Ozempic, but or shot. But but now Trexone was used um, for, and it still is prescribed to people who have food addiction. So they take it the pill, like they're going to go to a buffet. You just don't give a shit about the food because it just takes away your pleasure. So then you don't want it, and it worked. But do you know what? Here was the bigger shift with the now Trexone. So I took it before I drank, and it just made me realize, oh my gosh, alcohol has zero power it's my brain making it cool yeah. it's yeah. my brain not the alcohol and it shifted me not not the way it shifts other people <laughs> it, it was it's very interesting so i sorry i had to tell that story it was a little i love that story tangent. so much that was a good one <laughs> something you said earlier about abraham hicks and the um how we need to feel our emotions i think it's a really important thing yeah. to address too because there are a lot of people who 
and, and I used to be one of them. I totally admit this when I first learned about Law of Attraction in 2006 with the movie The Secret. So yeah. positive vibes only, you know, yes. and, and, and then now I know that like, that's spiritual bypassing. It's toxic positivity because those feelings we need to feel, like you said earlier, men especially are taught, you know, to suppress things. But when we suppress our feelings, you know, that's just denial. It's still in our body and can cause a lot of issues. It's we're not really fooling anyone. Right. So the, they're still there, in other words. And do you have anything more to say about the, the positive vibes only movement and just like in emotions being indicators? Yeah. If you, I mean, if you ever hear someone say positive vibes only, please run away from that person. Um, yes. this, <laughs> uh, love them, but run away from them. Um, no, you know, I think that, uh, I, I, I get our human nature to want to not deal with hard things. Mm. It's tough. And we live in a world now where, you know, the hard things are, I don't think the hard things have gotten harder or have necessarily increased. I think we just have more access to seeing them with social media and, you know, and, and news outlets being everywhere you go. Right. I think that there is an element of you have to take care of yourself. You can't, because I will, if I turn on the news and I watch it long enough, I will get stuck in this swirl of just despair, right? And that's not, that's not helping anyone. Me being in despair over what's happening in the world is not helpful to anyone. Right. But I do think that there's a level of awareness that's important if we're feeling something, if something is coming up, whether it's something that you're seeing on TV or whether it's just something that you're working through personally identifying it, uh, spending time just asking yourself in your body, okay, where am I feeling this? Is it in my chest? Is it in my stomach? Where am I holding on to the tension with this? And and not necessarily following the train of thought that comes with it. Because I, you know, I say, I say this a lot, your feelings are always valid. The thought that comes with them, not all the time. So <laughs> true. So, you know, I think awareness is good and knowing, you know, if we can identify how we're feeling, then we can choose relief from there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's really hard to get from despair. It's almost impossible to get from like despair to joy in one big step. And I don't know if I would ever want it to be that way, but, but I do believe that we can, we can look for relief. And when we can find relief for ourselves, then we can help ourselves and then help other people as well. I love that. And you referenced Abraham Hicks earlier, like Abraham Hicks would say, there's always a better feeling thought, always yeah. a better feeling thought than the one you're yeah. thinking. And that's so true because about what you said about feelings are valid, but our thoughts are not always true. Sometimes we are wow. just lying to ourselves mm -hmm. about, and, and that's the, a lot of the limiting beliefs that we have and that we, we really do like our brains are like a computer. We need to reprogram the, the lies to the truth. And the truth is that we we don't, I, I'm with you. We don't have limitations other than the ones we place on ourselves through our personal belief system. And with like law of attraction manifesting things, you know, people are like, oh, that doesn't work, you know, cause you know, it doesn't work for me or whatever. Well, number one, that's why it doesn't work. Cause you believe, <laughs> you know, it's working. It's showing you that it does. It's, it's exactly working as, as you believe, but um, we all have different personal belief system. So it's going to fluctuate. It's going to be different for everyone. It's not, you know, but it's always perfect. It's always working out perfectly for us and showing us um, yeah. what, where we need to shift our beliefs. Right. You know, cause somebody else might be great at manifesting abundance. That's like, they're really great at money, but mm -hmm. that same person might have a different vibrational set point when it comes to relationships they suck right you know so you could you could be really good at manifesting certain things and then need need to do your pro reprogramming on a different topic in your life you know yeah even abraham talks about you know i was listening to a talk the other day and i thought this was so great because i listen to abraham while i while i work out um and me too uh, they were yay <laughs> they were talking about the virgo um, thing <laughs> they were talking about the secret and how the secret used a technique or a tactic to get people to use law of attraction to focus on physical things. Mm. But law of attraction is not about physical things. And I think when people hear law of attraction, they think like, oh God, here comes these people telling me I can get a million dollars in my mailbox by tomorrow, right? Yeah. And sure, that could be a symptom of 
thinking, you know, adjusting your thinking and shifting your vibration. Um, I love this so much. Abraham was talking about, you know, the simplicity of law of attraction is simply just pay attention to how you feel. Yes. Yeah. But like our society doesn't want to hear that, right? <laughs> like they don't want to hear like, you know, they want to hear like, what do you it's mean? It's harder than you. Than it's good? That seems too simple. <laughs> but it's actually, it is simple, but it's also harder than it sounds because our human minds are just like, we got to get yeah. control. It's it's not, a, a, you know, redirecting thoughts is for me easier than trying to um, stop thoughts altogether. Like I'm still yeah. like, like I know I heard Abraham say, well, we teach silencing that you know quieting the mind yeah over pure positive thought because it's harder to teach pure positive thought interestingly enough for me i'm at the point i'm it's easier for me to think positive thoughts than to, to quiet my mind. I, got a lot, <laughs> I got a lot of energy i got a lot of energy travis i love it it's Ooh. great so but um and then the other thing that you made me remember abraham saying was with when we were talking about positive vibes only you've probably heard uh, Abraham talk about putting, you don't just want to, you want to know when your fuel is low. You won't, you don't yeah, want to be a happy, happy face sticker. sticker. Like, yes. Yes. <laughs> it's so true. Well, we need these indicators. You don't suppress them. You, you, you gotta know, you gotta know we, you're, you're always feeling the way you're feeling for a reason. And our emotions are a manifestation in and of themselves. Yes, absolutely. And that's important to know, like why you're feeling that way. It's guidance. It's guidance. CMS a signpost. So tell, tell us a little bit about, I know we're almost out of time. Tell us a little bit about your, um, your podcast. I want to know about this. I'm going to definitely start listening to it. It sounds fun. Psychic happy hour podcast. Oh, thanks. Yeah. You know, psychic happy hour was just one of those, like, you know, it, it was, it started two years ago and, uh, we're on a, we're on a season break right now. Um, but you know, it was one of those things where I was like, you know what, I want to, I want to help educate, folks on what it means to be a medium, what it means to be psychic, at least from my standpoint. And so on the show, I bring on, um, there's a couple of solo episodes, um, but on the show, I just bring on other people that are in the metaphysical field. And it's just, right. you know, I was just talking and, and talking about, you know, our experiences and there's some education in there. There's some fun, like lighthearted stories in there. There's some crying in there, you know, like it's kind of all over the place, but you know, my, my biggest thing was when I was coming out as a medium, um, all of the information I found, it just seemed like, you know, that mediumship was this like unreachable, very elusive kind of thing. Yeah. And I'm so thankful that, you know, spirituality has gone the way that it has on social media. And there's so much more education now. And there's so many free tools and resources for people to kind of learn. But when I was connecting as a medium, you know, there were just experiences that I was having that I wanted to share. And really was an excuse for me to like talk to people that I've always wanted to talk to as well and just record some, have some time with them and record that's, an episode and make some magic. And it's a great part it, of being a podcaster. You get yeah. to meet so many fun people. I love yeah. it. Yeah. And so, yeah, so I just, I wanted to just provide a little bit of education. I know there's a lot of education out there, but you know, uh, there's, these just these unique experiences that people have. And I love telling stories and I love hearing people's stories. So Psychic Caviar just kind of became that place for me to tell some of my story and and then stories of others. So it's um it's fun. You know, it's it's on a break now. I think we'll be back in the spring. Okay. Um because I've got some other things I'm focusing on now that needed my attention and that's my allowed. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually really nice. So I'm, a, you know, I'm, a, I know you'll identify this. I'm a Virgo. And so I'm like such a, I, uh, before I started my journey as a medium, you know, my inner perfectionist had to die because mediumship is not perfect. It's messy. And, yeah. um, and so I, uh, yeah, it's, it was nice. Like when I was first doing the podcast, I was like, oh my God, I've got to get these episodes out and I've got to do this. And I was like, I can just like give myself a break. So it's really nice to be on a break doing that. And shifting my focus right now to doing live events. I have a live mediumship event in Tacoma actually a week from today. So Thursday, the 22nd, so 2 nice. Um, I'm oh, excited. Perfect. I'm excited. I love delivering messages from spirit in a group setting and I work evidentially, which means, you know, I'm, I'm connecting them with the essence of the spirit and the names, how they passed, um, you know, important memories, 
symbols, all of that fun jazz. So it's really fun to do that in a group setting because there's so much healing that happens. So huh. that's where, um, and, and laughter, of course, spirit has a sense of humor. And so that's where my focus has been. But Psychic Happy Hour will be back in probably the spring. Nice. Yeah. It seems like a group would be more difficult, like discerning, but all the energies, like it seems like it'd be oh so bless oh, you. I love it. The first group I did, I'm going to be honest. So we talked earlier about those, those boundaries with spirit. I, the first group I did, I didn't set any boundaries. I was just like, give me messages. And then I get out on the stage and I was hit with this like tidal wave of energy so second group I did, it was in November in Denver, and we had a beautiful group of like 150 folks in this beautiful sanctuary theater called the Althea Center. And it was a spiritual center, but they have this big sanctuary theater and it's gorgeous. And um, so I set my boundaries before I went on stage. I was like, okay, I want everyone to stand in a single file line. I want one spirit at a time. I want, you know, and then the messages flowed so much more beautifully, but yeah, I, groups are really fun. Um, and there's what I find with groups is that there's so much that we have in common with each other. Um, so for an example in Denver, I was guided over towards these two ladies and I go over to them and I was like, you two. And I just point them and I was like, you two don't know each other, correct? And they're these two blonde women. They looked like sisters. But I was like, you two don't know each other. And they go, no, not at all. And, and I was like, great, stand up. And so, because when I read, when I'm on stage, I have people stand. And so had them stand and I go, uh, you both have a father in spirit. And they go, yes. And I was like, and, and your father's died from this type of cancer. Their dads had died from the exact same type of cancer. And I was like, your dads are both in the military. And they're like, yes. And like the whole audience is like, and so, and so then I go, and then I was like, and then there's a name connection with the middle name starts with an M. They're both Marie. But then I was like, but then there's an M name connection with children. They both have sons named Max that are the same age. Shut and these up. women did not know each other. I love how spirit is, uh, that's coordinated. You know, this is like, a, they, yeah. they call it piggyback off each other too. Or yeah. uh, that's not the right word, but there's a word for it. I've been to so many, like, because so, I've, I've been since, I mean, I had a, uh, well, now they call it spiritually transformative experience when I was only 18. And so I've just been on this path. Um, well, I was, I was always like into it before that, but, but that's really when I think, you know, it, but honestly, that's when I got bad with alcohol because mm -hmm. I was so connected. And now I know it was like a 5d for like two weeks situation. Mm -hmm. And then I, you, I came back down to 3d and it was depressing because no one under, you know, this was back in 90, 92, 93. So yeah. when I was 18, um, there was nobody talking about this stuff, but now they call it a spiritually transformative experience. And that's why I like to also have people on, on my podcast talk because it makes everybody feel okay. I'm not crazy. I don't need to, you know, self-medicate, you know, the, these, this stuff away. And, and I just didn't know how to integrate it because I didn't know, have any mentors or the internet, you know, anything like that. So I don't even remember why I brought that up, <laughs> but, oh, great, oh, I know because, because I'm so open mm -hmm. and I've had so many personal experiences. I've lived in a haunted house. Like I don't d have any doubts. The stuff is real. And so I, every time I'm like in the audience, not every time, but the majority of the time I will be one of the people to get a reading, even no matter how many people are in there. And I know it's because of my openness, you know, to it. And my mom died, uh, Christmas day, not this, a couple years ago. And, um, she has showed up like anytime I've been in the audience, like it's every time and it's been pretty cool. And I'm like, then I feel a little bit guilty because I've talked to her. <laughs> That's all right. I'm going to hire you too, by the way, I'm going to definitely hire you to have a one-on-one -on -one to, to, because I already know she's going to come through and, you know, it's just been little snippets here and there. And the one, cause I've been the audience member, but I've never done like a one-on-one. -on -one. So that would be fun. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, maybe there's something though with your mom. And I just, I don't know, even if somebody doesn't get a reading in a live event, I still feel like that energy of spirit is just so healing. Like I'll go, I, so I never get picked for readings, which is fine. Like, I don't like, <laughs> I, I have loved ones in spirit, but like, I talk to them, like we're good. Right. Like, yeah. um, you don't need one. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah. 
even if I, I mean, even, I mean, I would still, but I would still gladly take their messages in case any of y'all are listening, but, hey guys. Um, but you know, but um, I, I will just watch, I love watching other mediums work because everyone works differently. Like you watch John Edward live, the, the medium, not the politician. You yeah. watch John Edward live and you know, he is very, have you ever seen him work live? I just, yeah, I went last April. I'm going again this April. He comes to Cincinnati, the Sheriff's yeah. Convention Center. Yeah. Yeah. He's actually going to, he's going to be in Seattle next month. Um, And I just, I just went last year, you know, he's very like clinical, right? Like he's just giving you like the, the here's who they were. Here's how they pat. You're not really getting the warm and fuzzies from John, which is totally okay. You're right. And he's like, he's getting out tons of information. Yeah. Tons of like, very... like medical stuff. And I'm like, yeah. what? It, it's fascinating. Right. But then you watch like Teresa Caputo and there's a lot more, there's more, heart there like it's and and then you watch tyler henry and it's oh like, i, I love, love tyler henry i just love how i just love how different every medium is right like it's, tyler's like tyler gets sweaty he's like <laughs> drenched in sweat <laughs> oh girl i get the sweats i be getting the sweats while i read i i do i do sweat it's like <laughs> an overheating um like even with ch people who channel well, it's the same yeah. thing. It's a form of channeling. Yeah, you're um, mm -hmm. conduit. Yeah. But yeah, I just did a one on one masterclass with Tara Arnold. She was a previous guest. I, I found her on Next Level Soul. She channels St. Germain. And I did a masterclass with her the other day. And like I was getting heated. She was had to go outside for what you get overheated and you had to drink a lot of water. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was like, this is so cool because, you know, I was it was working and I'm like, wow, it's just basically everybody can do this. If we bother, if we tune in, of course, some people can, can trip on a rock and then that suddenly they're a channel. But for some of us like me, I, I, um, I need to take a class <laughs> and learn yeah. and develop it over time, you know, cause I'm always feeling the energies, but I've never bothered actually like yeah. doing a tuning in. And, and it's something I really want to incorporate into my coaching, you know, just yeah. being able to do it instead of consciously trans channeling that's what i'm trying to do yeah well i mean even like even olympic athletes need coaches you know what absolutely. i mean absolutely like all need a coach or somebody to help us just kind of finesse or understand certain things or you know get that different perspective so i love that it's a quantum leap instead of taking baby steps when you hire an expert who's already been through it i mean it's just so yeah. smart you know time, time you know you, you can't really um Put a price on that time you save that's why i call it a quantum leap you know when hiring coaches is one of the smart i've hired coaches you know and yeah. also it gives you confidence because i've i've paid for coaches who cost way more than i do and and i didn't learn anything i'm like okay yeah Honey, raise I've my got prices a, I've got <laughs> a, i got a psychic and a therapist so like i you know i get it <laughs> yeah for sure yeah we need to work on ourselves too and especially if we are working with clients and we're empaths I think it's imp what I do for sure is once a month, I'm going to do something to, you know, make sure like I don't, I clear the energy, make sure that I, because even though I do it after each client, mm -hmm. um, kind of clear, I still feel like I want to make sure like from somebody else, it's kind of like maintenance, like, like you take your car in, you know, just, Hey, make sure that I'm cool. Make sure I'm not carrying anybody's trapped energy because as empaths we can take on our clients energy and that's we really need to let them keep their own energy that they, they need to learn how to work with it so i was very guilty of that when i first started coaching it's a process to learn how to not take on your clients energy because sometimes they you know sometimes they really can hit you in the you know, your or pull at your heartstrings that's a good way to say it definitely yeah so well, so I would like to also ask, like, how can, and, and by the way, what you said earlier about the healing with the group, just in general, there's nothing more healing than, I mean, I want to thank you for what you do because it can't be easy and it's got to be emotionally draining. And then just, it's just, just, you're just healing people constantly. That's like the best life. Like I love being a coach, you know, but like yours is next level because nothing's healed me more than being able to connect with loved ones who've crossed over. And I hear it all the time from people. Yeah. That energy is powerful. Like I've, so I've been on the receiving end. funny enough, I've only been on the receiving end of mediumship twice in my entire life. Wow. Um, you know, uh, I've, I get plenty of psychic readings, right. But psychic and medium, it's, it's different. 
And so, um, you know, I've been on the receiving end of mediumship twice in my entire life. And it was just like, it was like full tears every single time, mm -hmm. which for me, I know is just, we're releasing some energy that's been built up. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think I understand the impact of the work, but I think that's a good thing. Like I love what I do and I hope I get to do it for as long as I possibly can. I also don't think that I fully understand the depth of it and what I do, but I think that's a good thing because I think it keeps me focused and it keeps me like on track for myself. You don't want to be too entangled. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. And like, and honestly, like I still want to have like, you know, I, I still I want to enjoy my life still right like so like you know when i'm when i'm with clients i'm with clients but you know what's so funny is, is i forget my sessions that's kind of like the i hear that I all the like, time spirit. it's a I race it's i'll a race. remember the person i will remember the person i read for um if i'm connecting in with their loved ones again i'll be like, oh my god i remember your mom you know like like but i don't know i just i kind of it's a little out of body for a lot of it um but uh yeah i forget a lot of the sessions but it's um it's it's really fun it's really exciting and i and i love it and i love that i love that people find healing just from sitting in the energy of it yeah and i i i'm definitely uh, glad you forget your sessions because i'm one of the criers i'll be like <laughs> uh, cuz i'm going to hire you and i'm going to be bawling and i don't want you to remember any of that because i'm i get very pretty emotional i'm italian yeah That's what happens yeah. i love it <laughs> Okay, Travis. Well, thank you so much. And how can people find you? So let's say somebody wants yeah. to sign up. Um, well, where can they find you also? Just where do you yeah. want them to follow you? Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram or TikTok. Uh, it's at Travis Warrior Unicorn. Both accounts are verified. So, um, you know, don't follow one that doesn't have the blue check mark. Uh, I saw you've been cloned. I, I saw that. Uh, listen, TikTok is TikTok has the most clones, and I was so, so thankful to be able to get that account verified. Um, so, uh, so Instagram and TikTok both Travis Warrior Unicorn, and then my website Travis Holp dot com uh is also where you can find me as well so hope h-o-l-p okay which means to have helped in old french fun fact is it really oh yeah cool. i did I, I did some research on my last name uh and in like old old french that it means to have helped nice perfect meant to be yeah so I'm going to have Travis's information, his bio. I'm going to put all of the ways, his links in the description box too, for anyone who didn't have a pen with them to write that stuff down. So make sure you follow Travis on all of his platforms. And I'm definitely going to do a reading. I, I just love your energy. I appreciate you doing this last minute because I kind of threw it on you just last night. And here we yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I love a last minute thing. If I can fit it in my schedule, I absolutely will. So. Yeah, I had to cancel and you saved me. So I appreciate that. And um, to everyone watching this, if you like this episode, please hit like, please share it with your friends. Let other people know about Travis who might be, you know, maybe they're grieving and they just need to connect with their loved ones. He's the perfect way to um, connect. I can tell that you've, you've got some true gifts and I can't wait to, to, for my session personally. So guys, please join this community. If you like spiritual uh, talks, spiritual stories, talking to people who have transformed their lives in some way, healers. Um, I've got people who can channel and psychics, obviously. So every Friday I have a new guest. So make sure you subscribe to this community and maybe you can even be a future guest on the show. Let me know in the comments below if you have any gifts you or stories of transformation that you would like to share. So thanks again, Travis.